Hello. Beer's Law, which is actually applicable not just to UV vis. It's applicable to uh, infrared spectroscopy. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of others. Any other spectroscopy that is, involves absorbance, Beer's Law will work. It's an absorbance based theory, not necessarily to just electronic transitions. Okay, question. Which one's more concentrated? I'll make the path links about the same. So which one's more concentrated? So you can kind of see me behind this one. That's Beer's Law, if you don't remember. Um, so the so I, I made this from my ink. So the molecules are the same, so they're absorbing in the same wavelength. The difference is the concentration. That's what this is going to relate, absorbance and concentration. But in order to do that, we need to put it in terms, um, we're going to start with the Lambert Law, and then it's going to become Beer's Law. So Lambert Law, which by the way, Johann Heinrich Lambert, um, he was Swiss, he proved that pi was irrational, it's kind of neat, and uh, developed Beer's Law or Lambert's Law, which then becomes Beer's Law. Okay, initial intensity, oops, let me pause for a second. Okay, um, so uh, what Lambert's Law is, is we're gonna have an initial intensity go through a sample size, and that sample size is dx. And then what comes out the other side is gonna be the intensity minus the amount of intensity of light that was lost or absorbed into the sample. Okay, so this is, again, the loss of the radiation. Okay, well, I want to know the fraction that was lost. So that is minus di over i equals the fraction of light lost. And that's going to equal, lost, equal um, k times l. Oh, sorry, not l, dx where this is a constant that will later become the extinction coefficient um, or the molar absorptivity. Um, okay, so then um, what we see is as it goes through, so as this becomes, this dx goes to and becomes an L, what we wanna do is I'm gonna say, okay, well, I'm going to look at this going from zero to L. So dx initially is some small amount. If this then becomes an actual L value, I want to sum up from 0 to L all of my, oops, sorry. <laughs> I want to sum up from my initial intensity to my final intensity all of the intensity that was lost um, as it goes through the material. And that's equal from 0 to L of K dx. Okay, let me break that down a little bit because I don't think I did a good job of that. As, as the light comes through the material, what's going to happen is, as this light comes through, let's say it starts here. There's my beam of light. But as it gets farther and farther in, some of this amount of light is going to be absorbed. So that means at this particular point, there's a little less light getting through. And then the next pound, uh, next moment, there's a little less light getting through. And the next moment, there's less light getting through. So it's going to, as you move through the material, if you have 100% starting at this side, well, when you get to here, not 100% of the light is now getting this far, and definitely 100% of the light's not getting this far because there's a certain amount of a, amount absorbed. So what you want to do is you want to look at what's the fraction of intensity loss, this, at every little slice, taking into account that your fraction of light changes as you move through the material. Go team? Okay. Um, so that's why we take, um, sorry, that's why we take from the initial intensity to whatever intensity it is at a, certain, at a specific di as it goes through. Okay, um, so, well, what is the integral of di over i, or dx over x? Well, that is the logar natural logarithm of, so minus the natural logarithm of i over i zero. Cool. What I can do is I can say, well, this is going to become a positive, and I'm going to flip this. If you didn't quite understand that, 
what I just did, pause me and rewatch it, and then email me about logarithms. Um, because, uh, anyway, so this is I0 log of I0 minus log of I, and I'm going to inverse those, and so when you flip them, you get a negative sign. Okay, so I guess don't email me, but there you go. Okay, so this then, well, that's an easy one. So this is a constant. So this becomes K times L, um, or I should say X, from zero to L, which is just K times L. Go team. So I've got log I zero over I is equal to K L. Well, I can take the logarithm, or take the uh, exponent, and this becomes I zero over I equals e to the KL. All right, um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to invert this because this is actually a better fraction to look at and that becomes e to the minus KL. Go team, everyone following me? Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of this exponential. And so I want to relate this exponential to a log base 10 scale. And that's where, and that's one of the reasons I'm taking you through this. Um, so I get, uh, so if I say log base 10 epsilon is equal to K, based on the idea of log of X is equal to log base 10, or log of 10 times log of X. So I can convert log of X into log base 10 by multiplying by log of 10. All right, so when I do that, so if I take this, stick it up in here, I get I is equal to, or I over I zero is equal to E to the minus log 10 uh, epsilon times L. Well, then that is just is equal to minus, oops, 10 times e to the minus epsilon L over I zero. Um, and then what I can do is I can say, well, now I want to take log base 10 of this. And so this is, can you still see me? So log base 10 of I over I zero is equal to, uh, cool, um, epsilon, Bell. Oh wait, sorry. I took the logarithm of both sides. My bad. So there shouldn't, this should be a, uh, oh no, we're good. So then I've got minus epsilon sub L when I take log, with ten, log base 10 of each side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go team. I'm going to pause and erase. Okay, um, so hopefully you followed that. Pause me and reread it. I'm, I'm also following Atkins, by the way. Um, this is in section 11. Um, but I've got log base 10, I over I zero. So this is the fraction of intensity that gets through. So there's my I zero and there's, I, I added a zero. I didn't have that before. Um, is equal to minus epsilon L. Okay, so why am I doing all this? Well, there's a notice there's a negative sign there. So I'm going to now flip this again. Log base 10 I zero over I is equal to E L. This is defined as absorbance. It's a log base 10 scale. That was the point of this whole thing. Um, so, and you would normally say this is A. So this is the formal definition of absorbance. Um, you've probably heard of transmittance. Oh, and I should say, um, so the absorbance is equal to, and this is normally called the extinction coefficient, this is epsilon, um, or the whole thing would be called the optical density. Now it's multiplied by that L, so there's a certain length that it's gone through in its sample, or gone through the sample. Um, so transmittance is just I over I zero, the fraction that is transmitted. To turn this into a percent transmittance, um, or actually I should say, uh, if you notice here, um, you've got A is equal to log base 10, one over T. If you look at old analog spectrometers where you had the little dial, the dial was on the log base uh, 10 scale. 
Um, and so that's one of the reasons is because this was, um, it's all log base 10 instead of natural log. Um, okay, if you have a percent transmittance, which is 100 times T, that gives you 100 times I over I zero. Well, but if you take the log base 10 of that to get A, you would see that log base 10 of this percent transmittance gives you log base 10 of 100 times T, which, so log base 10 of, whoops, of percent transmittance equals log base 10 of 100 times T. A lot of times in absorbance measurements, there's this infamous two hanging around and you either add two or subtract two. This is where that comes from. You've got, so log base 10 of 100 is going to be equal to, so this is log base 10 of 100 plus log base 10 of T. Well, this is equal to two. And this is equal to log base 10 t or log base 10 of 1 over t, that's minus a. So this whole thing, so log base 10 of percent transmittance is equal to 2 minus the absorbance. Go team. If you've done, um, if you do have some of our spectrometers um, and you see some weird 2 minus something, that's why you're looking at the log base 10 value of your percent transmission. Okay. Um, let's convert this to Beer's Law. So, pause. Okay, so if there's a certain concentration here, we have log base 10 of I0 over I, and that's equal to A is equal to a constant, then that equals epsilon times L times the concentration where here you've got uh, the absorption coefficient. Okay, it's material and wavelength dependent. And one of the interesting things about this is we've got A is equal to the integrated absorption coefficient. Most of the time when you've used Beer's Law, which if you recall, um, B is normally one centimeter, um, and then you'd have your absorption versus your concentration, and you get a calibration curve, and then you determine from this, you can take any or any absorbance of any unknown concentration, and you can fit it to the line, and you're like, aha, that's my concentration. So if I'd made a calibration curve, I could figure out what the concentration of the ink that I just arbitrarily poured in. Okay, Beer's Law. This, however, is monochromatic. This should be wavelength dependent, okay? It depends on the wavelength coming in because if you have 400 nanometers or if you have 800 nanometers, the molecules are going to respond differently. So if you look at the absorption coefficient as a function of wave number, it's gonna change. Most of the time when you've been doing Beer's Law, you've had to select a specific wavelength um, to optimize. So at this wavelength, this is my absorbance. The reason is because, so wavelength and wave number, they're related to each other, inversely proportional. Um, so this is your uh, wave number or your frequency. Um, so what happens is as you change your frequency, the amount that the um, material can absorb is gonna change. This is the region that you would normally have your monochromatic absorption occurring. If you were to select this region, say, I don't know, say from 200 to 210 nanometers, um, whatever wave number that might be, um, what's gonna happen then is there's such a gradient that the derivative of that is so strong that you're not gonna have a consistent value. You'd always wanna make sure that you select the, the constant molar absorptivity. Or what you can do 
is just take the whole thing, which is integrate, and which gives you the integrated absorption coefficient. So if you really want to do Beer's Law like fully, you'd want to take a scan of all of the different wavelengths and see how the material changes its absorption from one wavelength to the other. So you're taking into account all of the frequencies that can be absorbed at, by that particular material. And that's what Beer's Law really does for us. Go team. Okay. Beer's Law. Yay. Can apply to anything absorption. Groovy.